What's up everyone, Jason Trilly here, back again with more Pico CTF challenges. We're looking at the breadth challenge from Pico Mini by Redpone in the reverse engineering category. We see it's worth 200 points, so slightly more difficult than the last challenge we solved. In the description for this is, surely this is what people mean when they say horizontal scaling, right? Top secret info, our operatives managed to exfiltrate an in-development version of this challenge with a function with the real flag had mistaken it. Can you help us get the flag? If we scroll down here, we see there's two files that we can download, breadth version one and breadth version two. So I'm guessing we need to reverse engineer these and then find the flag, obviously, right? So right click, copy link, I already have a working folder downloaded here. YouTube Pico CTF breadth is just how I like to organize my challenges. So let's download the first file with wget. We see that saved correctly. Hit the up arrow and change that to breadth version one. Do a quick ls tag lh. Okay, both files are downloaded. They look to be the same size. If I do file star to check these out, we can see that they both are um, Linux executables. They're not stripped and they're dynamically linked. Awesome. Let's make them both executable. So we can actually run them. Let's execute the first one. Dead code. What's that? Make that nice and big. If we execute the second one, dead code. What's that? Goodbye. So if you're not familiar, dead code is basically just unused code in a binary, in a uh, program, in an application. It's code that's not used and it's kind of a waste of space. So I guess there's dead code in these binaries. Let's see if we check them out with the strings command. Breadth star, and let's type that into less. Okay. Hmm. Nothing interesting so far. Let's do forward slash search and type in Pico. Oh, okay. So there's a lot of flags here. Oh, there's a ton. Let's, uh, instead of piping that into less, let's grep for Pico. Well, that's a lot. How many is that? Let's pipe this into word count. Tack lines to see how many lines there are. So there's over 32,000 possible flags and only one of them is correct. So how can we go about determining which one of these is correct? So are these two programs the same? When we ran them, they print out the same thing. Let's see, diff on breadth v1 and breadth v2. It says that they're different, so they're not the same file. Let's compare. So compare, specify your options, and then whatever files. Compare two files byte by byte. Let's see, we want option B to print the differentiating bytes. And let's output in for both mode as well. So compare, byte by byte verbose mode, breadth version one, and breadth version two. Okay. So these are the bytes that they are different in. We see a huge jump here. Before we go any further, let's open this up in Ghidra. This is a very popular reverse engineering tool for debugging and decompiling. Okay, close the tip. We don't have an active project, so let's go to File, New Project, Not Shared. And this directory is fine. Let's just keep it simple and name the project Breadth. And now we want to open up the code browser underneath the tool chest. All right, now that Ghidra is loaded up, we need to import our binary. We could probably do version one or version two, but let's do version one. Okay, it automatically knows that this is an executable and linking format file. It tells us what compiler was used to create it. 
All right. All right, let's analyze it since it has not been analyzed yet. You can select what options you want. So ASCII strings, we could uncheck that since we've already looked at the strings earlier with the strings command. Honestly, I just leave these set as they are. I don't really see a reason to change them. If you want to be super verbose, you can just select all of them. Or if you really know what you're doing, you can only um, select the exact options that you want. But I like to just leave it as the default. It gives us a summary of some stuff we already know, right? The file name, the architecture, the processor. We see the minimum address here, and then there's the max address. I'm curious if it prints out the starting point, the starting address. I don't see that yet, but I think we'll need that. Okay, let's hit okay. And down here in the lower right-hand corner, you see that it's disassembling stuff. We see undefined main. Perhaps once it's done um, doing its thing and analyzing, this will give us a little bit more info because if we click on it now, these functions are unknown. Everything is unknown. So let's pause for a brief second and wait for this to finish analyzing completely. All right, in the meantime, I've made this a little bit larger, a little bit easier to read. It's still analyzing, but we see that these were unknown and now they're DAT, I guess maybe that's shorthand for data, but it's still going. Oh, cool. Okay. So this changed. Those were just generic function calls, but now it changed to put string, which is the actual C library function call that's being made, as well as the exact strings that are being printed out. So this is what we saw earlier in the terminal when we ran these, right? Dead code. What's that? Goodbye. And over here, we have the main function, and we can see those symbols here. Hopefully that's big enough. Maybe I can zoom in a little bit. Okay, hopefully that's not too cluttered. Let me organize these windows a bit better. Analyst found for the symbol main. Would you like to go to that? Okay, we're already here. So this is the main function. This is the starting point, the entry point. If you want to be specific, it gives us this address here, underscore start. And then we have this entry address. You can double click there and it brings us here to the actual main function, I guess. I'm not 100% sure. I know this says, uh, let me organize this. Libc start main with the first um, parameter being passed is the main function. I feel like I'm saying the word main way too much. And that brings us here. So essentially the actual starting address is here. If we scroll down, let's see what else is here. I like that Ghidra has these like nice code blocks here, denoting this is a new function. Scrolling. Okay, nothing too interesting yet. Okay, I've scrolled down this far. We see this function FCN and then just this gibberish at the end and if i scroll down here we see a flag being loaded into register rdi so is this the correct flag i'm not sure if you keep scrolling we see another similarly named function with another flag being passed in so you can see here my cursor wheel is at the very top so we have a long way to go right let me scroll all the way down here and we still see that there's flags if we go back to our strings call from earlier strings word count l we see that there's over thirty-two thousand different possible flag options so that's a lot so we want a way to just narrow it down so and i'm curious where is it at so we ran this compare function compare byte by byte these two different files these two different binaries and the first result that popped up that was a large number is this one right here so i'm curious if we convert this to hex using python let's do print hex that number there we go we get ox 950fc and if i go back to ghidra and i hit g and i search for that address 
we don't get any results. Why is that? This is a this isn't a true address. This is an offset. You can tell because it's too small. It's only one, two, three, four, five digits long, whereas these are one, two, three, four, five, six digits long. So we're missing a digit. So that's just an offset. How do we find the actual starting point? Well, we have it right here. This address here, 0101091. So if I can grab this, oops, that's not what I wanted at all. If I can just grab this value, copy it, and now I need to add those two together. So I'm sure there's an easy way to do it in Python, but it's not coming to mind right now. So let's just look up a hex calculator online. This one looks good. And let's paste in our two numbers. So we want this one as well. Slam that in there. And here's the hex address. So let's grab this. Come back to Ghidra. Hit G to open up this go to this like search box. Hit OK. And we get this flag. Is this the correct flag? Can I just copy this whole value? Where can I find this entire value? It's getting cut off. How do I get it without these dots? Right click, copy. Let's see, is that the correct flag? Slam that in, take out these quotes. No, that one's incorrect. So there's something off in our calculation, something off in our math. Let's go back to that starting point. Huh, okay, this is interesting. So we see undefined main and we see the starting point here. But if I scroll down just a tad, we see underscore start, which over here maps to libc start main. Let me pull these up side by side. So this is a different starting point. Let's use this value instead. Maybe it wants the offset from libc start main and not from this other main. So if I come back here, go to my calculator, slam this in. Now we get a different address. Grab that, hit G for search, slam in this new address, and we get a different function. Come over here, double click on this, and it brings us here. Right click, copy. Maybe it wants this flag. I don't know if you guys can see that. Let me zoom in. Take out the quotes. There we go. So I wanted the address of libc start main and not regular main. Is that, um, can I look that up in the man page? So why is that? What is, C start main versus main. So this result from the Linux Foundation, let's see what this has to say. Libc start main is the initialization route. It takes these different functions, or it takes as arguments, the main function, which itself takes an integer. So arg v, arg c, so on and so forth. It takes a lot actually. So this function shall perform any necessary initialization of the execution environment. It will call the main function with appropriate arguments and handle the return from main. Interesting. So I'll need to do further reading. I'm not sure why exactly um, the offset is from libc start main and not the actual main function. But there you have it. That's how we solved it. We calculated the differences the with the compare function it gave us this address we converted that to hex and then we looked up that hex offset from the ellipse start main starting point address and that's how we got this final address over here of ox195064 and that is the correct function address that calls 
uh, I guess, our flag. I feel like as I'm explaining this, I kind of just confused myself, but hopefully that made a little bit of sense. Uh, reverse engineering can get kind of tricky, especially when it's not real programs, it's not real code, it's kind of just these um, capture the flag challenges. So reverse engineering, actual binaries, actual games, actual malware, it might be more logical than these one-off challenges. But there you have it. Let me know in the comments down below if you guys found this useful, if you want to see more reverse engineering content from me, if you found a different or better way to solve this, let me know. Like, comment, subscribe, follow me on social media, Twitter, all that jazz. As always, take it easy and see you guys in the next video.